Well, Skip and I were in high school together at Carmel High School. Um, we both went uh, to Carmel and all of, all of our time. And um, so we started dating when I was in the eighth grade, I believe. And uh, we just kind of grew up together. And then he was a year ahead of me in school. And so he went on to Purdue the next year when I was a senior in high school. And actually we became engaged on New Year's Eve of, that, of 1952, actually. But uh, he became interested in the fire department and I really don't know how that took place. But I have a letter that uh, he wrote to me that in 1953, and I believe it was March, he felt like that he was going to be approved to become a volunteer on the Carmel Fire Department. And so, uh, we uh, finally got married in 1954 in February and uh, Carmel decided that they would hire their first two hired people for the fire department. And he applied and uh, became one of the first two men who were employed by the Carmel Fire Department. Well, as uh, we uh, did move to Carmel and we located just across from the fire department so it would be very handy. And um, then, and actually, I had to carry his meals over to him because with just he was the only one on duty. Uh, he was so interested in that that he finally got a speaker that he put in our bedroom that was connected to the fire uh, transmission there at the station, so he wouldn't miss anything if somebody else in the county was having a fire that we might be called out on and he was just so thrilled with the fire department. Since I lived across the street, uh, just out of curiosity, whenever the siren went off, why I would run across to see where the fire was. Mildred Adams also lived as a neighbor across the street, and so she would also go over. Her husband, Gerald, was one of the volunteers and actually uh, later became fire chief for two years. So we were there one day when they were having a fire run and whoever was out on the trucks called in for something and there was no volunteer there to answer the radio. And so I think Mildred picked up the mic and uh, responded to them. And the fireman thought that was a good idea and so then she and I became volunteer radio operators and we went day or night uh, we would uh, be alarmed by or know about the alarm by the fact that the siren went off. Well, when we first moved to Carmel in 1956, we had one daughter who became two years old at that time, and we had another daughter that year in 1956. Then we had a son in 1958, and uh, the last son was born in 1960. And so, um, with the four children why uh, we were busy. On uh, December the 3rd of 1960, it was a very warm day for December and there uh, were many, many fires that day, most of them grass fires. And the fire department had constructed a Jeep into a grass fire fighting truck that they could drive out in the fields to get to the grass fire. And so uh, we were quite busy that day and uh, I made many runs across the street to uh, see about what was going on and to help with the, any of the fire runs that there were. December the 3rd, 1960, I was working with my dad in the garage with my brother. We looked up we seen big smoke with this north of us. Of course, curious, you know, let's go see what smoke is. So we jumped in the car and went over there, and it was a big field fire coming up around a house. We heard the sirens in the background, so we knew the fire truck was coming. So, but we helped stomped out the fire a little bit and just used our foot, our feet, and uh, I think we used a, uh, had an old blanket we swapped. And uh, then when the fire truck got there, it was a grass fire truck from Carmel. The guy, the assistant chief at that time that was on it, name was Skip Clark. He says, hey, he says, 
we need firefighters on the west side. Would you guys like to join? Well, because I was only 19 years old then. I said, hell yeah, I joined. Oh. He said, we got a meeting Wednesday night. Come over. Okay, we'll do that. And so this call came in uh, in the evening. That was the sixth call of the day. And uh, Skip and Phil Rouse were in this Jeep fire truck going to a, a grass fire run when they got to about 110th and Rangeline Road. Uh, a lady in a car coming from the south turned left in front of them. So they swerved and went, took to the ditch to avoid hitting her. They did avoid hitting her, but uh, it was felt that they either hit a rock or a hole as they tried to get back up onto the road and the ju uh, Jeep flipped upside down and uh, Skip was underneath the Jeep. Skip was taken to uh, Riverview Hospital in Noblesville and uh, our doctor was uh, quite a long ways away and so it took a long time for him to get there but he was declared dead after uh, the doctor got there. The firemen did stand guard, if I remember right, uh, by the casket until the time of the funeral. And then at the cemetery, which was the Carmel Cemetery, they uh, each one had a flower that they put on the casket, uh, all the firemen did. It was very difficult. I remember thinking at the time that I had the opportunity or the uh, I could make a decision whether I would be bitter about what had happened to me for the rest of my life or whether I would just go on and I chose to go on and so I was active in the church and uh, I just stayed active and stayed busy I did find out that by volunteering to do things for others was one of the best things I could do to recover from the grief